It is my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of Business Trends for today. I am Tolu Ajayi. The word insurance is very familiar to quite a number of us. But what is insurance and what is its relevance to a country? Insurance is a legal contract that protects people from the financial costs that result from loss of life, loss of health, lawsuits or property damage. Insurance provides a means for individuals and societies to cope with some of the risks faced in everyday life. People purchase contracts of insurance called policies from a variety of insurance organizations. Almost everyone living in modern industrialized countries buys insurance. For instance, laws in most states require people who own a car to buy insurance before driving it on public roads. Lenders require everyone who finances the purchase of a home or car with borrowed money to insure that property. Business partners take out life insurance on each other to make sure the business will succeed even if one of the partners dies. Insurance makes up part of the broader financial services industry. In the United States in the late 1990s, more than 5,500 insurance companies offered a wide range of policies and services. Some large companies sell virtually every type of insurance available in the marketplace. Smaller companies may specialize in a specific geographic region or type of insurance. In 1997, more than 300 Canadian companies sold some form of insurance. In life, losses are sometimes unavoidable. People may become ill and lose income or savings to pay off medical bills. Individuals or their relatives may die of illness or accidents. People's homes or other property may suffer damage or theft. People also may accidentally cause injury to others or damage to the property of others. No one knows in advance when a loss will occur or how serious that loss will be. The uncertainty surrounding potential losses is known as risk. Insurance offers a way for people to replace risk with known costs, the costs of buying and maintaining insurance policies. Assume a person buys a new car for 25,000 Naira. Its owners faces the possibility that at some point, the car will suffer damage in an accident. But how could the owner budget in advance for a loss of unknown costs? The cost to repair or replace the car in the event of an accident could range from the price of a bottle of touch-up paint to as much as 25,000 Naira. If the accident injures someone, the costs of medical care could be much higher. Through the mechanism of insurance, however, the car owner can share the risk of an accident with others who face the same risk. Insurance pools combines risks shared by many people, thereby reducing the risks faced by a group. People pay to buy insurance coverage, protection from risk. In exchange, all policyholders, that is, people who own insurance policies, receive a promise that the group of policyholders as represented by the insurance organization will pay when any policyholder experiences a covered loss. The reduction in risk brought by insurance re relies on a mathematical concept called the law of large numbers. That law states that the ability to predict losses improves with larger groups. Using calculations based on statistics, Experts, known as actuaries, can actually predict the losses of a large population even without knowing when or how any one individual will experience loss. Insurers distinguish between two types of risk, speculative risk or pure risk. Speculative risk offers both the potential for gain and the potential for loss. People who invest in the stock of companies, for example, take speculative risk. An increase in stock prices produces a gain, while a decline in stock prices produces a loss. Pure risk, by contrast, creates the potential only for loss. Although pure risks do not necessarily result in losses, they never result in gains. Historically, insurance dealt only with pure risks, 
and most people still buy insurance to cover up your risks. No one, for instance, experiences a gain when they go a full year without an auto accident. However, some insurance companies now help businesses finance large losses including those incurred on speculative risks, such as international exchange of currency. Also in the 1990s, financial markets and some professions outside insurance, such as the field of environmental impact and damage assessment, began to expand into risk management for the first time. Hope you've been educated with that little background on insurance. Now, the Group Managing Director of Royal Exchange Assurance PLC, Alaji Awalu Mukhtari, in this exclusive interview, shed more light on the role of insurance to the growth of an economy and its benefits. The Group Managing Director of Royal Exchange Assurance, Alaji Awalu Mukhtar, thank you very much for joining Business Trends at this time. What do you think is the relevance of, uh, of insurance to a country? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to welcome you to Royal Exchange um, PLC in our office to discuss issues relating to insurance. We really appreciate uh, your coming. And this will give opportunity for Royal Exchange to express its view and discuss the issues related to insurance to the country and the African continent at large. Uh, insurance is one of the key products uh, in the economy of any nations. Uh, without insurance, a lot of uh, the growth of the economy will always be running in a similar space. So insurance, insurance helps to alleviate suffering of businessmen, business organizations, uh, the government itself and assist in ensuring that there are continuity in businesses when it is when insurance can be taken. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Are insurance companies are they paying claims? Yeah, very well. Um, if if insurance companies are not paying claims, they cannot be existing all these rights. Typically, for example, my company Royal really Insurance has been in existence selling insurance for about for hundred years today. Uh, we should be celebrating our 100 years by February 2018 and that shows the only business we do is insurance. And I can assure you that we are tend and settle to genuine claims as a when you and property. So the corporate organizations, the government organizations and private enterprises are really happy uh, with the services offered by the insurance industry at large and Now, as a follow-up to that, uh, what is real exchange is uh, Claim paying capacity line today? Well, claims uh, paying capacity it fluctuates year in year out. Um, we don't pay for claims, but you know we are in the business to settle claims. Uh, I want to share you in 2016, our uh, total claim settlement was in the region of about 4.5 billion naira. Uh, typically, we have a very strong one claim that we pay 3.5 million US dollar, which is a marine hole that caught fire in, in, in the sea. And this has affected the entire industry. A total claims of over 20 million dollars were settled by the insurance industry in Nigeria. That has helped that business continue. Without insurance, the cargo will have been lost and they will never come back to be in businesses again. And there are small, small businesses, enterprises that are growing. There are claims here and there. If I can tell you, Royal Exchange alone has a valued claim of over 4.5 billion in 2016. Uh, definitely, you know, the entire industry is talking about uh, 100 billion in claims settlement in the year 2016. And there are a lot of factors that are constraining growth in the insurance industry. One is the term and lack of awareness for the insurances that have not been gone to the grassroots. And the religious aspect in some regions, but still, the insurance is not in price. But you know, the industry is through the health of the National Insurance Commission, which is our editors and the NIA umbrella of the entire insurance industry. They are working day in, day out to make sure that uh, visibility is uh, bring to bear. Um, awareness and campaigns are being made to make sure that uh, insurance has been taken to the grassroots. And uh, there are a lot of compulsory insurances that are made by those regulators and the government, and things are being followed up gradually within the shortest possible time. I think insurance will be the first to come. 
I assure you that in the next five years, insurance will be one of the key drivers of the Nigerian economy. What should Royal Exchange, uh, why should Royal Exchange be the uh, insurer of choice for Nigerians? Well, thank you very much. <coughs> Royal Exchange is a household name in the Nigerian insurance industry. Uh, precisely by next year, February will be 100 years. And so we have been in existence for 100 years. Uh, most of the staff here, including myself, have already just started the businesses who are not bound. So uh, the integrity is there, the acceptability is there, and the performance is there. We have lived to expectations year in, year out, and services are clear, giving them the best of service. Um, it's a old company, but the management are young, the teams are young, and uh, we are technology driven. So I think we we'll continue to give the best of service to Nigeria insurance industry. And that is why people should continuously come to Royal to and ensure that the insurance product works. What should Nigerians be expecting from Royal Exchange going forward? A lot of transformation going on within the insurance industry in Nigeria. And Royal Exchange is looking beyond uh, what the industry is doing. We are driving all our products to be technology driven. The company is focusing into digital marketing sales of our products and uh, we are focusing into so many areas. The company has turned into a group funding structure in 2007 after the capitalization exercise and we brought in a lot of subsidiaries in order to uh, get to the entire economy of Nigeria. Uh, we have uh, the general insurance as a separate entity. We have the life insurance as a separate entity. We have a health maintenance organization which is called uh, HMO and that the NHI has regulations. Uh, we also have an asset management that will provide financial services. At the same time, we have a microfinance bank which is already existing within the group structure of the company. We're also driving towards uh, getting in a technical company so that we can sell the retail products and uh, the uh, technical compliance, Islamic compliance policies as well also as bringing the pension fund administration into the portfolio of the subsidiaries of our agent. All these we are working towards to ensure that uh, we conclude arrangement and make sure that they are bought uh, before the end of year 2017 so that we can fully put our strategy in place. We are going to focus on the retail driving factor so that our income, as of today, we expect to make about 30% of our income from the retail business that is going down the road and engaging the youth to make sure that they participate in the insurance activities. And they are informed of what insurance is all about so that when they grow, they will continue to, uh, to get enlightened and public and down there. Now, talking about grassroots penetration, what are, can you tell us some of the plans we are actually this one? Um, like I said, the digital marketing, uh, using the telephones, technology to make sure that uh, out of our 60 million Nigerians, I understand that over 60 million active telephone lines in Nigeria. And there is no house we enter that will be no telephone, no data. So we are thinking of focusing our advertisements, our products, on this, uh, through the use of technology so that any house wants to browse your phone, you can buy your product online from your mobile, you can see the list of products that are in place, and then you buy We are also focusing to bring in the weather index and agricultural insurance into the form because of the downs of our former partners that are not being engaged very well in insurance so that you make the knowledge of insurance to all level uh, of individual in the Nigerian economy so that everybody will be talking about insurance one way or the other to make sure that penetration is achieved. Out of the 60 million active lines, we want to make sure that we touch at least within the next one year a minimum of 20 million telephone lines by introducing what products we have on the ground for uh, self insurance and our electricity policies. Okay, tell us some of can you tell us some of these products that you got? Um, as a conventional insurance company, all the products that are being sold in the insurance businesses we sell them to Royal Exchange, uh, both in the life aspect and the general aspects. So there is no insurance policy that is being sold in the Nigerian economy that is not being sold at Royal Exchange the names of those products because they are not yet known to the public and they are not yet known to our regulators and they are not being approved. But I want to assure you we are working to around the clock to make sure that before the end of the year all these products will come to our product from our regulators and then by next year we will spread them into the market and start active 
Okay. Uh, you'll agree with me that Nigerians, uh, when I say they have this apathy about insurance, if at the moment an insurance uh, uh, policy uh, individual or guy walks up to you and starts discussing, there is this you know, uh, attitude that Nigerians uh, have towards insurance. What do you think are the benefits of taking insurance? Well, there's a lot of benefits in, in taking insurance. Um, a lot of businesses along the line that arises from the business use without insurance. So in as much as we are sensible businessmen and entrepreneur that we want to continue in business, insurance is key. So in case of any catastrophic laws or any laws that may arise as a result of running your businesses, insurance will be there for you. Apart from businesses, even homeowners, individuals, you know, uh, in Nigeria today, a lot of houses were able to be able to obtain loans from the bank, buy televisions, jewelry and other items in your house. Within a day, when you come into the house, you have no settled alone, there is no insurance on the product and the restaurant, then you are left with nothing. And with the insurance, you will quickly get your claims and terms and cover all those items and be able to continue to service you at all. Um, another benefit of insurance is also in the area of the life business is saving. You know, nobody has monopoly of his life. You don't know when you will die. So if you take an investment policy in that, at maturity, by the time you retire from service, you'll be able to get a lump sum of money that will assist you to drive your ambitions after retirement. You can also have policies that will keep paying uh, uh, educational fees for your children even at death. So by the time you affect that policy, it's a great benefit. Even if you die within the period, your children, that policy will be paying school fees for your children until they graduate from the university. So there are a lot of massive benefits at Makai. If I am to be telling you the benefits of insurance today, I will not finish this interview. Okay. The nation is thinking of growing its economy, especially through the micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. At what stage, as an entrepreneur, should one start to think of insurance? At, at any stage. In fact, when you are forming the businesses, you must think of insurance. Because the moment you set aside that capital, there is a tendency for risk to be these days, risk is everywhere. So, the first thing you consider when setting off, no matter how small the business is, what will mitigate that risk that you are entering into is the insurance. Is that risk that I'm going into insurable? Yes. Do I have the insurable interest to insure? Yes. Then go ahead and take your insurance. The government is focusing on making sure that they empower them through the medium scale and enterprise businesses. Government is subsidizing a lot of uh, loans to those individuals to start their business. Like I have said before, you took a loan from the bank. The government has subsidized and given you a loan to start your business. You went and bought a machinery that you want to start uh, doing shoes, for example. And overnight, that machinery bought. If you don't have insurance, we will give you that loan again to go and start on over again. But with the insurance, you will be able now to recover the money and buy another machines and continue your businesses. Even if you could not do that, that insurance will pay back the money you took from the government organizations. And then you become free of debt and continue to do your businesses and survive as an individual without any money of debt on your head. So there are a lot of opportunities that are coming in. At any stage you are in life, you need insurance. Even getting out of your house. You don't know whether as you come out you'll be hit by a car, you'll be hit by a motorcycle. You know, all these are risks. So at any level you need to look at which type of insurance you want to take to make sure that you mitigate that risk that is expected to be for you, your family members, relations, your assets. How strong is the Nigerian insurance industry? Um, insurance industry, like I said, has been there for 100 years after the the industry has formed an umbrella body which is called the NIA. So all insurance companies that are registered in Nigeria today are members of that organizations. So we're staying as one members, together we stand by the firm. So I want to assure you that we are strong today in terms of capitalizations, we are strong in terms of our unions, we call the direct activities to the union and the NIA. We have a very strong regulator <coughs> that is also looking into the activities of the industry to make sure that 
we are moving in the right direction to make sure that we are moving to catch off with our fears in the market. Uh, what do you think is responsible for the low insurance awareness in Nigeria? Well, there are two major things that I think uh, is, uh, that we cannot say it's low. There is low awareness very well, and then the per capita income of Nigeria is very well. Even though there is awareness, the poverty level within the low income awareness, they cannot support to release part of their income to pay for the insurance. That has been key for them. So insurance are coming off with low products that will be able to accommodate the low income and as soon as we can get to the to, to the grassroots. If you have a policy that um, you'll be charging 500, 200 naira either on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, people at that low level can afford to pay the premium. As again saying I'm charging 20,000 once in a year, somebody cannot afford to have that. If you have a product tailored towards daily or weekly payment as an investment policy, or even an asset insurance that you can be insurance on a weekly basis, look, pay me this, you have a cover for one week, if anything happens, I'll be there for you. Then every week you are now bound to be paying that to make sure that you do that cover. People can be able to afford it through the use of their handsets. Even from their recharge card, that money can be but as well become accessible and easy for people to patronize. So the industry at a higher level is trying to make sure that that awareness is being publicized, the regulators are supporting us, and I assure you, like I said at the beginning of the program, that in the next five years, we should be able to get to the classroom and ensure that the insurance awareness uh, is, is, is all over the country. The Group Managing Director, Royal Exchange Insurance, PLC, LIG, Awad Muntari, thank you very much for making time out to be my guest on Business Trends today. And thank also you. have the assurances of my best wishes. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. That's Business Trends for today. Hope you've enjoyed watching. I am Tolu Ajayi. Do keep your views and comments coming via social media platforms on your screen. Let's do it again next time. Bye for now.